Hi everyone and welcome to my talk on the magic of CBD and the benefits it can bring for reducing pain, easing anxiety and stress and helping to get better quality sleep. So my name is Mary Biles, I'm an author and I have a book coming out at the end of, of next month called The CBD Book, uh, The Essential Guide to CBD Oil. Um, I also mainly write for an organisation called Project CBD which is a non-for-profit in, in California in the United States. And I'm a host of a, a pod podcast called Cannabis Voices. So uh, let's crack on and, and find out more about CBD. So I'm going to share my slides. And well, what is CBD? So um, CBD is the, the, um, the sort of shortened way of saying cannabidiol, which is a naturally occurring compound in cannabis sativa which is also known as a cannabinoid. Cannabinoids are only found in cannabis. Um, most of the CBD um, that you'll find on the market, in, certainly in Europe and in North America, is actually extracted from hemp. So hemp is, is, is cannabis, but it can, contains very low amounts of THC. So um, THC is the, is the bit that gets you stoned, essentially. Um, so in the United States, that's 0.3% THC, and in Europe, that's 0.2%. Um, so hemp is a very interesting plant, very briefly, just to say, you know, it's, it's a kind of wonder plant, really. It's, it not only is it's got very strong fiber that a whole fleet of navy were sent to war with sails and rope that are made from hemp, it, um, you get incredibly nutritious hemp seed oil from its seeds and hemp protein, etc. And it's also a bioremediator, which means that it sucks out contaminants from, from the soil. So this is really important when you're sourcing your CBD oil. Ideally, it should come from organic hemp, organic certified hemp, because imagine if your hemp was grown on contaminated, contaminated soil or, I don't know, by a kind of polluted river, it would be literally soaking up those contaminants and then you'd be taking it in your, for your health, which doesn't make sense. Um, very important, CBD is non-intoxicating, so you're not gonna get stoned. Um, it is legal because it contains only the very trace amounts of THC, or sometimes no THC. <clears throat> and the World Health Organization declared it to be safe, non-toxic, and non-addictive, okay? So if anyone new to taking any cannabis products or hemp products, it's always a concern, am I gonna get addicted? It's not actually gonna happen with CBD oil, in fact, one of the uses or, or areas that are being researched is actually using CBD to help people with cravings coming off their addictions. Okay, so that's CBD, the molecule. What is CBD oil? Um, okay, so CBD oil could possibly better be described as a hemp extract. So what that means is you have CBD because that's the most uh, abundant compound, um, but you also have a host of other naturally occurring compounds that are found in, in hemp. So you've got minor cannabinoids um, such as CBDA, THCA, I'm not going to give their long names, um, and even trace amounts of THC, as I mentioned before, um, in full spectrum products, but it's not enough to give you a psychoactive effect. Um, there are also terpenes, which are the aromatic molecules that are found in nature, so not just cannabis, it's in all aromatic plants and flowers. So um, actually, you know, cannabis has a, a very kind of distinctive smell. It doesn't come from the cannabinoids, it comes from the terpenes. Um, and there are terpenes that are in cannabis, but are also in other plants. So for example, linalool, which is found in lavender, is responsible for the relaxing effect. Um, limonene, which is found in citrus fruits, is a very kind of elevating, mood elevating um, terpene, and that's also in, in cannabis. Um, and you also find some flavonoids, which are powerful antioxidants. So uh, with your hemp extract, your full spectrum CBD hemp extract, um, you've got all this kind of, all these molecules together, which are creating a kind of synergy, which is known as the entourage effect. So if you think of um, like a movie, you have the protagonist, the main actor, which, uh, okay, they're, they're great and, and you wouldn't have the movie without them, but you also need the rest of the cast and you need the extras um, to kind of, you know, to really have a, a whole uh, experience. Um, and the same goes with CBD oil. You've got the, the kind of protagonist, which is the CBD, 
And then you've got its entourage of other players which are supporting its role and potentiating its effect. Um, so we've got the full spectrum, which I've spoken about. It has a little tiny bit of THC. And then you have broad spectrum, which is more or less the same, usually, um, but it's had the THC removed. So this is of interest to people who are worried about um, getting a drug test and will the THC, THC show up in a uh, drug test or any other reasons why they not, may not feel comfortable about having a product with some THC in it. Um, and then there are uh, products made with a CBD isolate, which is a purified um, CBD. Um, now, probably like me, you would think, okay, CBD is so great and I want to get the purified version. Uh, it doesn't quite work like that. Um, it's mostly anecdotal evidence, um, but it, the feedback is from people that uh, with CBD isolate, you need to take a lot more and often it's not as effective. So um, generally, if you can go full spectrum or broad spectrum, that, that is pre preferable. Um, and just to say, these CBD oil products are classed as nutritional supplements, so they're not a medicine, and companies that are selling them shouldn't be making any medical claims. Um, and how to take them? Well, I'd say the most popular is um, in tinctures or, or drops like this. So literally, you take the CBD under your tongue and you hold it there just to kind of help um, with absorption. Not everyone likes the hempy taste. I, I love it. If it hasn't got the hempy taste, I'm like, ah, God damn it, where's the hempy taste? Um, but for other people, they're like, mm, that's a bit, that's a bit too much. So they might prefer CBD capsules or soft gels. Um, vaping, again, is very popular, particularly for people who want to have a, um, a more instantaneous effect because it's the quickest way of getting the CBD into your bloodstream, although there is some kind of safety issues potentially. Um, CBD edibles, your gummies, chocolates, they kind of put CBD in everything these days. Some of it's a bit kind of faddish, but you know, if it's a CBD gummy, you're probably doing okay. As long as there's not kind of, I don't know, horrible additives and things that, that you wouldn't want to be taking in a health product. And then CBD topicals. So literally uh, creams and ointments that you rub on your skin, um, which seem to be popular for joint pain, muscle pain, and also inflammatory skin conditions. So how does CBD work? Well, I'm not gonna kind of bore you too much with the science, but just to say, I love this description of it being a promiscuous compound. So what that means is it kind of gets around uh, by activating multiple molecular targets at once. So perhaps for what we're talking about today, we would be interested in um, its activation of the serotonin receptor. So we know that um, serotonin is a neurotransmitter that um, relates to our mood um, and keeping us kind of anxiety free. So, uh, and studies show that the general calming effect of CBD very much comes from its activation of this particular class of receptor. Um, but also CBD binds with um, another class of receptor called the TRIP, one receptor which relates to regulating pain perception and inflammation in the body and body temperature. Um, it also interacts with some receptors that um, may mm, explain uh, anecdotally its anti-tumoral effect and actually you know CBD is being researched as an as a anti-cancer drug um, and it has an overall anti-inflammatory effect on the body which Right now, um, with what's happening with COVID-19 and this hyper-inflammatory state, this release of, of pro-inflammatory cytokines, there is research happening for CBD um, as a potential way to, to reduce this um, hyper-inflammatory state. So there are some clinical studies happening um, related to that. And it's also CBD is a powerful antioxidant. Um, and just to touch briefly on the endocannabinoid system. So you may not have heard of the endocannabinoid system. It was discovered in the 90s when scientists were trying to work out how THC has its effect in the body. And they found this vast network of receptors in our brain, central nervous system, immune system, basically all around the body that are activated by endocannabinoids, which are cannabis-like chemicals. Um, one, anandamide, was named after the Sanskrit word for bliss. So that kind of gives you a, a clue on, on about the effect it has on, in, in our body. In fact, the, the run is high is as much to do with really um, producing anandamide as it is with endorphins, we, we now know. So the endocannabinoid system is a homeostatic regulator. So it's trying to maintain balance across all our systems. So it's a really, really, really important 
system in our body. Bizarrely, it's not taught in med medical school. I mean, it's just starting now, but because of its, uh, its relation to cannabis, it's, it's been um, generally ignored until now, which is crazy. Um, our endocannabinoid system can become depleted uh, by how we live in modern society. So chronic stress, poor diet, uh, excess alcohol, and this makes us more vulnerable to anxiety and depression and other conditions related to hypersensitivity to pain like fibromyalgia, IBS, and migraines. We know that CBD helps to strengthen the endocannabinoid system. So it helps to kind of um, increase the signaling between the, between the anandamide and the receptors. Okay, so moving on to CBD for pain. It's one of the most popular reasons people take CBD. Um, there is some preliminary evidence to support the, its pain relieving properties. It works best if your pain is for some uh, inflammatory reason, so possibly for autoimmune conditions, rheumatoid arthritis, that kind of thing. It's not so good on neuropathic pain. Um, and don't expect miracles overnight. Uh, this is something you have to take it consistently over at least a month. And you know, it's not a one size fits all. So the, the general rule with, with CBD and medical cannabis is to start slow and uh, start low and go slow with dosing. So you're gradually building up to find your own personal sweet spot. So you have to listen to your body. There's no doctor to tell you. I mean, it's a nutritional supplement, but you know you have to like really, really listen and maybe have a journal just to take note of of, of how it's going. Um, CBD for stress and anxiety. I mean, I you know I have started recently using CBD myself again for, for stress and anxiety. I'd forgotten to, to take it over a period of months. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it, I was feeling with the whole kind of COVID-19 thing, the confinement, I was feeling a bit stressed, it's got to be said. Um, so, uh, so many people use it for, for managing stress and anxiety. And there is some interesting research going on, particularly for social anxiety. Um, the studies I should point out are using the purified CBD and they are mostly using extremely high doses as a, a one-off um, uh, dose of CBD. So about 600 milligrams, which is the equivalent of, of kind of a standard bottle in one go. Um, that said, many people report getting great benefits for redu reducing stress and, and feelings of anxiety and overwhelm with far lower doses. But again, you have to listen to your body and you have to take it over a period of time. So you start low, you go slow. I keep repeating the same message, but it's the same for everything really, whatever you're taking CBD for. And please, you know, if you have persistent feelings of anxiety, seek um, advice from a health prof uh, professional. Um, so CBD and sleep. Uh, Again, a popular reason for, for taking CBD. Many people actually start taking it for something else um, and then actually notice, hey, my, I'm actually sleeping better. So um, an important thing to note is CBD has a biphasic effect, so particularly for sleep. So for some people, a small dose might, might leave them feeling uh, quite alert and then a high dose makes them feel sleepy. For other people, it's the other way around or it's just, you know, it may not have that effect at all. So it's a very kind of individualized um, relationship with CBD. But if you're taking CBD for sleep, it's probably a good idea to not take it directly before you go to bed in case you have that sensitivity and it makes you feel more alert. Um, so maybe just take it in the morning or at lunchtime. And just some quick advice for how to find a, a good product. Again, as I said before, go organic. Look for companies that have third-party lab tests. So you see what's in your CBD oil. Has it got the CBD that it says, the other cannabinoids? Ideally, what are the terpenes? And you want to know what is not in the, in the product as well. So is it free from heavy metals, mold, etc.? Ideally, full spectrum, um, if not broad spectrum. Um, you choose your own delivery method. You may need to try out a few yourself, what's more convenient. Um, again, don't go for the cheapest 
nor the most expensive actually uh, there's a lot of premium brands this is like you know there's, there's a kind of green rush going on with cbd and there's i, I noticed a lot of premium brands which feel to me a bit more kind of um style over content so you know kind of fancy packaging and that kind of stuff it's not necessary frankly um and be prepared to try more than one product so don't be put off if like you first try something and it doesn't really work maybe go and check out a, um, a CBD Facebook forum, get some advice from other people and, you know, maybe try something else before you, you give up. Um, so that's it. Thank you for listening. And um, there's some more information about me on my website, about the book, the podcast, there's some more articles. Um, if you want to kind of um, see some more of my writing and I look forward to answering your questions. Hi everyone, um, I hope you've enjoyed my talk about CBD. I'm really excited today to be here. My first ever live Q&A session online. So I've got a question. The first one is, how often should you be taking CBD? Um, well, just to start with that, there's no one size fits all with CBD. Um, but a sort of general rule of thumb is to um, probably take it a couple of times a day. So I would recommend I must point out I'm not a doctor, so this is not a, um, a medical advice, um, but most people take it in the morning and in the evening. But as I mentioned um, when I was talking about sleep, perhaps if you're taking it for sleep and you're just starting out, avoid taking it just before you go to bed. Um, I'm just gonna remove my earpiece because it's really annoying me. Um, so is it short-term or long-term? Don't expect miracles overnight, as I, as I said in the talk. Um, for some people, it can be, you know, sort of day and night, you know, they, they, they perhaps for pain, um, they feel an effect quite quickly. Um, but generally, you know, you should allow about a month taking it regularly to feel some effect. If you're taking it for something that's more chronic, um, such as stress, you know, stress can be a, a chronic situation and anxiety and pain. It is something that you can take on an ongoing basis. Um, also, is there anything I should avoid taking it alongside? Now, bearing in mind, we're talking about taking CBD um, as a nutritional supplement. So usually people are taking between mm, 10 milligrams uh, a day and possibly going up to 100 milligrams for something that's possibly more um, chronic pain related, but you know, not necessarily. Um, and really at those sort of levels, it's unlikely that there would be any drug interactions. But if you are taking prescription medication, uh, I would recommend speaking to your doctor. Uh, increasingly, um, physicians have more knowledge about CBD. Um, in my book, actually, I do talk about um, drug interactions, and there is a list of um, medications where there could be some caution needed. But as I say, if you're taking it at the lower doses that, that most people do uh, for nutritional supplements, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, okay, next question. Uh, what CBD brands do you love and why? This is a really, really hard question because there are so many CBD brands. So I just, uh, at the moment, um, I'm using a particular brand, well, two brands. I mean, I'm based in the UK, so um, I'm using a brand called Spirit of Hemp um, and another brand called Cannawell. Um, and I like them because one, they're full spectrum that I mentioned in the talk. Um, Spirit of Hemp also um, adds back in some more terpenes. So terpenes are the, the aromatic molecules that have therapeutic properties in their own right. Um, they're made with great love and care. Um, they haven't come about as part of this kind of green rush explosion. You know, they're, they're, they're genuine people wanting to help other people um, through CBD because because there is, you know, potentially so much money to be made in CBD, there's, there's been a, a whole kind of flux of influx of companies being set up just with dollar signs in mind. And I, and personally, I, I try and stay away from those. Um, but, you know, as I said in the talk, you really have to try a few, a few brands and, and see what works with you. And I really, really recommend um, dipping into some Facebook um, groups that are for CBD, asking questions, because you know these are the people that really, really know the brands, and um, and they can be really helpful just to give you some tips. Okay, next question. 
Um, I have a family history of arthritis, but I do not have it yet. Is CBD preventative um, or does it help you once you have the medical problem occur? So, again, remembering we're talking about here CBD as a nutritional supplement. So, um, you know, any kind of CBD company worth its salt would not say that um, CBD is going to um, uh, control the pain that you have with arthritis or, or prevent the pain with arthritis. Um, but I think if you consider it as being a nutritional supplement and think of it, um, I mentioned the endocannabinoid system in the talk. Um, I think quite a lot of us are endocannabinoid deficient. Uh, and when you consider the amount of stress that we're generally under, and particularly at the moment with the whole um, COVID situation, I think it's fair to say there's a, um, our endocannabinoid system um, need a little bit of kind of uh, extra support. So when our endocannabinoid system is working, at, at, you know, as it should be, it's keeping us in balance, basically. So in this way, if you're taking CBD and supporting your endocannabinoid function, it could be considered preventative, but there's no scientific studies to say that. So I think it's, you know, it's, it's something very helpful to think of it in those terms. Um, so next question, is there any evidence of CBD helping with glaucoma? There isn't any evidence. Um, uh, THC, which is the psychoactive compound in, in cannabis, yes, there is. And actually that that is um, uh, one of the indications, glaucoma is one of the indications uh, for um, medical cannabis in many countries. Um, so to my knowledge, uh, which dose needs to be taken daily in order to get any really effects for, for anxiety? Really sorry to disappoint everyone, but I can't say, I can't say with dosage because it's a very much um, a personalized approach. So um, you have to, this is an invitation. CBD is an invitation to listen to your body, right? So um, my advice, I, you know, I, I do get anxiety um, and the only way to go when you're starting off with CBD is the start low, go slow. Okay, so let's say you start off with the, the lowest strength oil, you know, don't go in with the big guns um, and you just take maybe a couple of drops three times a day for let's say three or four days. Am I feeling anything? No, I build up a couple of drops and you keep building up until you actually start to, to feel the effect that you're desiring. So in which case, you know, if it's for anxiety, you start to feel a little bit less anxious. And then when you start to feel a little bit less anxious, you go up a little bit more. And then if you find there's no change now, you know your sweet spot is the previous dose. So I can't say it's 10 milligrams, it's 20 milligrams. Um, it's up to you. You have to um, try it out for yourself, maybe have a diary. Um, and also, as I say, you know, you can try different brands. Um, it's really important if you're taking it for anxiety, that you make sure that it's it's a brand that um, comes with third third party lab reports. So um, I think um, I don't know if I mentioned it in my talk, but there have been various studies when they've taken samples uh, of different CBD oils from that you can buy online and on the high street. This happened in the US. This happened in the UK. Different countries in Europe, um, and some of them were found to contain no CBD. Some of them were found to contain uh, less CBD. Some of them were found to contain above the higher um, than legal limits of THC, which if you have anxiety, um, might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable, might make your anxiety feel worse. So um, really make sure that you choose a brand that they're fully transparent, that they contain exactly what they say they do, and you could even go broad spectrum for anxiety. It's not necessarily the case. I mean, I, you know, I use a full spectrum product, but I have tried products in the past that were full spectrum. Um, I think they had too much THC in and it did make my anxiety feel worse. Um, okay, next question. Can CBD be given to kids to treat in inflammatory conditions? So remember, I am not a doctor. Um, CBD, um, you know, I mentioned in the talk that um, that the World Health Organization has found CBD. So remember, this is CBD, the molecule, okay, that the World Health was, Organization was talking about. And it was basing its um, 
its uh, findings on mostly on the research that's been done with Epidiolex, which is a purified CBD drug for children with epilepsy. So that generally has a, a, a good safety pro protocol. There are some minor side effects. There are some interactions with some uh, anti-epilepsy epilepsy medication. Um, but I think that, you know, if it's something that you are considering taking, um, giving CBD to your child, you need to speak to your doctor or your pediatrician. That was my, would be my basic advice. It could help with inflammatory conditions, but I'm not a doctor. In principle, it should do, but you, that's a conversation you need to have with, your, with a health professional. Um, will CBD help with urinary tract pain inflammation? Um, I would say, I mean, I've had urinary tract pain and inflammation and um, CBD's pain relieving effect can be quite subtle and it can be something that, so for example, um, um, well, as I said before, it can take, a, a, you know, a few a days, weeks, a month to take effect, okay, and you're gradually building up your dose. So for acute pain, um, such as you would get with a urinary tract infection, personally, um, I wouldn't rely on CBD. I would go, you know, take, well, I'm not going to take give medical advice, but um, I would stick to what, and you could take it alongside, but I don't think that probably would be an appropriate option. Um, I can't read, okay. Could, could you provide some insight into the different levels of effectiveness with respect to consumption of CBD? Um, for example, smoking it in a cigarette format without tobacco, edible oil. Okay, yeah, that's a really good question. So we're talking about um, delivery methods. In general, certainly in the UK, in Europe, we don't have access to um, high CBD um, cannabis flowers. So um, we, we really have the something that's, uh, you know, extracts that have already been through some kind of process. So smoking it with or without tobacco is not something that I can, I can speak about, um, but you should definitely avoid, you know, smoking tobacco if you're taking things for health reasons anyway. But um, when we're talking about delivery methods, there are two things to consider. Um, there's what we call bioavailability, which is how much of the, the CBD that you're taking can actually make it into your bloodstream, because it's only once it gets into your bloodstream that it can actually take effect. Um, and you know, we also consider how quickly it acts. So for example, with vaping, um, it, the, the bioavailability poss possibly is highest of all the delivery methods and has the quickest acting effect. Um, but there is a little bit of controversy around um, vaping CBD because um, there were some problems, particularly in the United States, when there were some impurities and it was causing problems with the lungs. But, you know, if you're going to, you know, vape CBD, again, you have to get make sure it's third party lab tests and, it, and it's um, a safe product that you're using. Um, if we're talking about bioavailability, possibly the, the second best are the drops. Um, because they are, you have to take them under your tongue, but you absorb them in the capillaries under your tongue. You have to hold it, the, the oil there for about a minute or two. Inevitably, you end up swallowing some and then it gets broken down during the, the digestive process by liver enzymes. And so really, you're probably absorbing, or your body's only using about um, between 12 and 20% when you're, when you're um, taking CBD drops under the tongue compared to, I think it's about 30% with vaping. Um, so then we've got the edibles. So your kind of your soft gels and, and your gummies and stuff like that. Um, that's kind of the, the, the least effective when it comes to bioavailability because, uh, it all has to be basically digested, um, and, you know, and go through that process. So I think the, the absorption is only about 6%. But having said that, a lot of people, you know, get great benefits from from taking um, ed um, edibles and soft gels and capsules, etc. Um, and you know, I think well, there's you know your topicals as well, which uh, again, the absorption, if it's something that's quite superficial, is quite good. So um, yeah, the the thing as well with your with with swallowing, so in your kind of soft gels and and your edibles. It does take longer to have an effect, so you might not feel anything for an hour or an hour and 15 minutes. So the general recommendation is to, for generally keeping a kind of uh, 
a base level of CBD. It's your CBD oils and your and your edibles and and your um, soft gels. And if you have some breakthrough pain or if you uh, have maybe a sort of sudden feeling of anxiety, then the vaping is quite effective. Um, okay. I found that CBD, no matter gummies, drops, or pen, affects my mood negatively the following morning. Morning, I tried multiple brands as well. Any ideas why? I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a psychiatrist or a neuroscientist. It's, it's, it's very hard to say. I mean, it's, you know, I think that's that would be a reason to to know that that CBD is not for you. Um, I don't know whether you've tried. You say you've tried different brands. Perhaps have you tried? um the broad spectrum so you could you know try and um, decide if you've tried full spectrum it might be worth trying a broad spectrum product it could also be um because terpenes you know they do have a therapeutic effect in this in themselves some people find um certain per terpenes are uh, too stimulating myrcene is um a type of uh terpene that has that kind of couch lock effect so it might have something to do with the terpenes because remember we're talking about CBD, but most products are actually, you know, they've got CBD plus the minor cannabinoids plus the terpenes and plus flavonoids. So um, it might not be the CBD actually that you're having a problem with. Um, okay. Well, I think um, got one minute to go. I don't know if there are any more questions. Um, what I would say. Uh, you know, it's it's there's a lot of kind of confusing information out there about about CBD, um, and um, what I've tried to do in the book, the the CBD book, the Ultimate Guide to CBD Oil, is just kind of hold people's hands through that process of 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 managing to get your little hands upon a decent CBD oil. And I, you know, I do a deep dive into all the conditions where what is the current evidence, and give you um, really kind of solid. Uh, it's, it's a solid guide on on how best to get what how to get the best from from CBD oil for you. So uh, I hope that's been helpful for you. Um, you can find out more information about me on my website. So that's marybars.com. And I wish you all well on your well-being journey, be it with CBD or without it. Thank you very much.